AP Calculus AB. Uh, I wanted to do some uh, AP Calculus exercises on the calculator because I think this is really going to help you get a good score on the exam. On the exam. I think it will, could probably bring your score up by one number, so it could get you from a 3 to a 4 or a 4 to a 5, etc. So I think that's really good. So what I hope to do is go over quickly derivatives. Derivatives, first or second derivative at a given point, evaluate a limit, uh, and then if there's enough time inside seven minutes, figure out how to invert functions. So let's get started. I'm going to start here on my calculator. So just to find a derivative, I'm going to take a derivative of something a little bit difficult just to make it more interesting. First thing on your calculator screen, just go to menu, press the menu button, go to calculus, and hit derivative. It's that simple. Remember, though, here that if you're taking the derivative, if you're going to take ddx of something, then the variable in, inside the parentheses must also be x. And one that I struggled with a little bit was this one. So let me see if I can make this work. How do we do this, Joel? Oh. So I want co of cosine squared x. I want to find the first root of cosine squared x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a se second set of parentheses. I'm going to type in cosine, cosine x. And then from outside these parentheses right here, then I'm going to square it here. And if you're anything like me, what you really want to do is you want to put the square right past the cosine. I have not figured out how to do that, to be honest with you. So this works every single time, and uh, I think Jason figured that out yesterday. So thanks, Jason. Here's your credit. So just hit enter, and there's your derivative. All right? You could take a derivative of something. Uh, if you wanted to take the derivative of something that looked like this, maybe you want to take the derivative of, of a rational function. See so the same thing. You hit menu, calculus. Sorry, calculus, derivative. I'm going to take the derivative in terms of, you know what, in terms of t, oh, sorry. You know what, I'm going to take it in terms of t here. And then what I, my whole point to you here is if you're going to do that, then you'd have to take the same thing here. So here I'm going to take of negative, and I'm going to hit control division to give myself a rational there. Joel of cosine t, so cosine t over t. And this is what I'm talking about here, is that if you're taking the derivative of something with respect to t or with respect to whatever, the variable inside has to match. If it doesn't, this is a kind of a bad thing, this calculator gives you back an answer of zero. So it doesn't say that you, ha that you have a mismatched variable. So I'm going to hit enter here, and there's our function. Now what you might find here is that this, cal this calculator is set up by engineers, and I think that they think this is the proper algebra, and it is to me. But you might find that on the exam that they make this t sine t to make this t squared so they can get it all over one denominator. So that's me showing you how to find derivative, a, a derivative. Let's try to find a derivative at a point. So let's find this one if you don't mind. So we're moving on to derivative at a point. So I'm again going to go to calculus, and here, derivative at a point, make sure that your variable matches the one you want, and then this is the value that you want, that you want to evaluate your, your derivative at. And in this case, I want mine to be pi halves. So there's two ways to do this. If you can't remember, then you can just type in pi, P-I, it will read it, pi divided by 2, and your calculator will recognize this as pi halves. Or you could use this button down here and put in pi divided by 2. I'm going to hit OK here. I wanted a first derivative, and the function that I had was sine x over x, so I'm going to hit control division to get, to get a rational, to get a solidus here. I'm going to put in sine x, and there's more than one way to do it. You can type in sine x, or you can just hit trig there, hit sine x over x, and now it will evaluate this, the derivative of this inside function at this given point. And there we have it. All right, so hopefully that's helpful to you. Maybe we, let's do uh, actually one more if you don't mind. Let's see if we can find one that's second derivative. Do we have a second derivative? Well, let me just show you this, I guess, because I, I don't want to get lost in this for, for too long. If, I, if you want it to be a second derivative, then Joel, all you would do is this. You'd go back to calculus here. You take derivative at a point. And then where it says derivative, you would just say, you would just select second derivative or nth derivative, and you can assign that value. So past a third derivative, 
you're not you're not going to be taking much past third derivatives. All right. So where are we going from here? Oh, to limit. So let's do a limit problem now. So let's do a limit problem here. I'm going to hit escape. Thanks, Joel. So here I want to do a limit problem. Same thing. Hit calculus. Asked to take a limit. So I'm going to go to calculus. Go to limit. Now this is, gets a little bit slippery. You have to really read this carefully. This is the limit that I have. I'm going to take the limit of h as h goes to zero. So I'm just going to follow the directions. This is right out of a exam as the limit goes to zero. If you put something here, remember that there are three ways to take a limit. You can take a left limit, you can take a right limit, or you can take a limit. So if you're taking a limit from the left hand side, you would put a negative sign here. If you're taking it from the right side, you'd put a positive sign here. But if you're just going to take a limit, you would leave this blank. And if you're getting ready to say, Charlie, which one should I take? Read what it says in the book, because if, if it says take the limit as h goes to zero and there's no delineation here, there's no advice here, then leave it blank. Take your cursor and go over. And then this thing looks kind of bad, so let's take a look at it. It's control division, and I want this limit, which you could probably take by hand, but I want it of e. Remember, e is a number, so I'm going to use e here, not e here, right? And then I want it from the, uh, e to the 1 plus h power. And in a minute, you're going to look at this and you're going to be like, I could do this without the calculator. I know, I'm just trying to teach you how to use this. This is a real danger here. The cursor is up in the exponential range. Use your right cursor and make sure that it comes all the way down and then put in the rest, which was minus e. Here, just to be safe, it says e to what power. Some people say you can take your cursor and delete that. I just put 1 in there unless it says otherwise. And then over, and it says over h. Now, hopefully, you can see this and you can be like, you know what, I know what this answer is. I know this is still a good example. Remember that this, sorry, that this whole thing was in terms of h. And I look and make sure my variable is in terms of h also. Make sure that my e is Euler's number e and not the letter e. And there's a difference, right? The letter E is here on your calculator. Euler's number E is here on your calculator. We want this one. All right. And hit enter. And there's, there's that. All right. So you can do any limit that way. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here. I'm going to do another video in a minute on how to take the inverse of functions. All right. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe. And your comments are always welcome. Thanks, you guys. Appreciate it. And good luck. And I do great.